Well, our topic is walking in the steps of the faith of our father Abraham. And this course is taken from uh, Romans chapter 4 and verse 12. And uh, the, the particular text here is that, that, he, that he is the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, mm -hmm. but who also walk in the steps of the faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. Mm -hmm. There's a lot there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just a little uh, background here. Uh, I can tell you that uh, a few months ago, or a couple months ago, um, while I was riding in my car, I was listening to uh, Alexander Scorby and uh, Romans chapter 4 in particular again and again and again. And I just tell you, I couldn't, I don't know how many times I listened to it, but it was just so good. Mm -hmm. So there's so many things, and, and that's more or less what gave uh, gave birth to these uh, to, the, to putting together these thoughts, you know. Mm -hmm. And and some of them now that I, I look back, I wonder how they, they actually fit together. You know, like uh, do they actually fit together? Well, it's all I, it all fits together, yeah. right? So, but anyhow, yeah. it's uh, anyhow it's all. So, Brother Larry, if it, if it doesn't fit together, you know. Uh, we're really glad to have Brother Larry still with us here. Amen. Amen. Now, let's think about some things here. Uh, you know, Abraham exemplified, exemplified the kind of faith that God imputes righteousness to. Mm -hmm. And particularly as this is spelled out in, uh, in Romans chapter 4. As this is uh, as this recorded, this is, a, this is a, like a... Uh, a report, uh, you know, like a summary, a summarization of Abraham's life from the time that God met him, first met him in the, uh, you know, there in, in Genesis chapter 12, and uh, first appeared to him. His faith had respect to what God had promised in spite of circumstances mm -hmm. and imaginations that were to the contrary, mm -hmm. even in antagonistic even mm -hmm. in things that were working against him. Mm -hmm. He did not forget the promise. Yeah. So, I'll tell you, this promise that God spoke to him was of such a nature that he could not forget it. I'm, I'm, we're going to talk about that. You know, that this, this appearance of God unto Abraham, this is not, this was, uh, well, we're going to, we'll just, we'll talk about that in a few moments here. Unlike the word uh, which, which God had spoken unto Noah, mm -hmm. uh, one of them pending judgment, the promise which God began to speak to Abraham was a promise of exceedingly good things, yeah. both for him and for all the families of the earth. It was a word, however, that was followed by severe trial and testing in order to demonstrate before principalities and powers the manifold wisdom of God mm -hmm. and to hold forth before succeeding generations the man who would later be called the father of all them that believe, mm -hmm. and the father of circumcision, and a father of many nations, mm -hmm. and the father of us all, and to the Jews, our father as pertaining to the flesh. Mm -hmm. Just think about that. How many instances Abraham, now this is something that God did. Yeah. This is not a tribute primarily to Abraham, although it is in a sense. Yeah. I mean, this is a, I mean Abraham, Abraham walked this faith. Yeah, that's right. But I'll tell you, this is a, this is more of a tribute to God in His work in Abraham. See, this is what we're this is wonderful. This is what God was working in Abraham. This that's is right. why this is why these things were produced in Abraham. This is why God was able to talk about like this to about Abraham because of what right. God did, you know, in yeah. Abraham. In the face of all odds uh -huh. that would cause other men to stagger and fall. The scripture affirms that Abraham did not stagger. Yeah. He staggered not at the promises of God. Yeah. You know, this is the promise. See, now this promise that God made to him, he stag he didn't stagger. I'll just tell you, flesh staggers. That's right. Flesh staggers before God's yeah. promises. Uh -huh. Flesh cowers. Flesh actually doesn't want anything to do with it. You know, it's flesh doesn't want to yeah. flesh uh, flesh uh, senses the demands that God's promises are making upon them. He, 
uh, is, as well as the great benefits that are being bestowed, you know, that are coming with this, but there's also a price tag. There is yeah. a price tag approach uh, attached to these promises. Yeah. So it's, a, it's a price tag of everything that you've got. That's right. Every, I'm talking about your heart's affection. I'm talking about, I don't mean, you know, all the money that you got in the bank. I'm not talking about that sort of thing. I'm talking about your, your entire person. See, this is, uh, it requires everything you've got. Uh -huh. Abraham staggered not at the promise of God, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And this is a commentary on the promises of God and their far-reaching magnitude. Mm -hmm. Unbelief staggers, as we said, at divine uh, commitments, oaths, and promises, but faith receives and earnestly embraces them. Mm -hmm. Now, whereas other men, for the most part, were ignorant of God, and even refusing to have him in their knowledge, Abraham was given a promise of God, a promise of, a, of direct involvement with God and his purpose, a promise of a key role in the unfolding of God's purpose. And he was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was also able to perform. Amen. And whereas others would have cowered and been given over to doubting, the commentary of Scripture is that Abraham was fully persuaded, yes. and had and with, had uh, what what God had promised. See, this is a, but see now this is a, this is a commentary on God as well as a commentary on Abraham. See where see we don't we see if we if, it's, if the focus is just on Abraham we lose the picture. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's it's because of it's because of the God of Abraham. See, this is we're talking about the God of Abraham and what he produced in this in this in this man. Now, Abraham uh, was, was strong in faith. Now, to be sure, Abraham is to be commended uh, for his strong faith, uh, as the scripture over and over makes commendation of him. I would have you to consider, however, that the source of that strength did not come from what Abraham received from Adam, or that he possessed as an offspring of Adam, but rather from God himself. Mm -hmm. This is where the strength came, it came from God. If this were not the case, then Abraham would have something about which to glory. You know, and he doesn't, see, he, that's what Paul said in Romans 4, 1, right? Mm -hmm. The selection from among the sons of men, but even more so as it pertains to God's work and to God's work and a purpose and grace, even God, who was in Abraham, laying a foundation for the appropriation of the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Mm -hmm. Now God was sowing this thought in the earth. See, yes, there back uh -huh. in Abraham. See, this matter, now he was talking about, it. he began, remember he said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. That's what Jesus said, right? And he saw it and was glad. But see, now Abraham, now the connection with, with, with Jesus is that in, in Abraham, God was laying the foundation, not for salvation, but for the appropriation of the salvation. That's see, right. see, the just shall live by faith. Yeah. See, he got, see this, this thought, he was sowing this thought in the earth. See, yeah. God, you know, God is a sower. You know, God is, and he sows, you know, he used different men to sow different, different thoughts regarding salvation in the earth. He, he, Abraham sowed the thought of justification by faith. Yeah. Uh -huh. That God, you believe God, right. he imputes it for righteousness. See, Abraham, in Abraham, that thought was sown in the earth. Yeah. Amen. God used it, but yeah. God did it. Uh -huh. God did this. Let's think about uh, the, extended, the extended times when God appeared to Abraham and made uh, mention to him, especially those found in Genesis 12, 15, 17, 18, 21, and 22 were no doubt the source of Abraham's strong faith. This was no ordinary personality that had appeared unto Abraham, but rather God Almighty himself, who appeared, who declared himself to be Abraham's shield and exceeding great reward. Now, I'm just telling you that well, this is who God, now, see, this, this is something that Abraham, you couldn't forget. Mm -hmm. But God, see, if, you, if this was just a, even just a righteous man who had appeared to Abraham, had just come by, well, you could eventually forget that, right? Mm -hmm. But maybe, 
But I'll tell you, this Abraham was not able to forget this, yes. this, this God, God who appeared to him. Even these, even these brief appearances, this uh -huh. was something that, this had, this had like a sustained, lasting effect that was worked in Abraham. Just, this was God. This was God himself, in, mm -hmm. in whose presence is fullness of joy. Yes, amen. And at whose right hand there, is, there are pleasures forevermore. This was the God who appeared to Abraham. This was the righteous God. See, this mm -hmm. is the righteous God who, who hates iniquity yeah. and who loves righteousness. Mm -hmm. see, this is that God, see. But he appeared to Abraham. This is, the, this is that divine personality mm -hmm. who, who actually appeared to Abraham, see. Mm -hmm. He appeared to Abraham. Amen. See, now this is a, this is a, this, see, now this, uh, well, this accounts for, uh, mm -hmm. well, I'm just, I'm just, this is my judgment in the matter, but this accounts for the, the, the character God was, produ God was producing yeah. character in Abraham. That's right. So this is, uh, see, we, we, if, you, if we think about Abraham, it's just, uh, you know, he was a, you know, he was a great man because, uh, because of who he was. Well, there's a sense in which that's true, and there's a sense in which it's not. Yeah. Uh -huh. There's a sense in which it's all going back to God. Amen. God, God made the selection. He knew who to select. Yes, that's right. He knew, he knew the right man to select yes, he, yes. He, when he appeared to Abraham, uh -huh. right? He knew. But God made the selection, uh -huh. and God appeared. He made the appearance, and God, uh, and God did the work. God did the work in his, uh, in his speaking with Abraham, in his communicating with Abraham. God did the work. Amen. These extended times of appearance to Abraham on the part of God were of sufficient duration, some shorter, some longer. You know, we don't, they don't tell, the scripture doesn't tell us how long, how long they were. Mm -hmm. There's this one time, I believe it's in Genesis 17, that the Lord just left off speaking with him. Mm -hmm. See, you know, that, just that language, he left off speaking with Abraham, see. But in Genesis 12, it seems to be like a shorter duration, mm -hmm. at least if it, at least by the communications, you know, that's uh -huh. what God said to him. Uh, Genesis 15 seems to be of a longer duration. But let, let's just... Uh, these extended times of appearance to Abraham on the part of God were of such su sufficient duration to effectually work in Abraham a change in moral character and persuasion, a persuasion that the judge of all the earth would do right, a persuasion that what he had promised he was able also to perform with an, even with an oath, he confirmed it, and he was, he was able also to perform this. Abraham knew that regarding these times when God appeared to him, he was not fantasizing. Yeah, this was right. not a dream. Amen. This was, this was a, you know, he could have said, well, Sarah, I've just, uh, I've, I think, I, I, think I've had, I don't know whether I had a dream. I just, I don't know whether I dreamed or not, whether this was uh, something that I just, uh, I was just fantasizing. No, it wasn't on that wise at all. Abraham knew of a certainty. Yes, yes. He, there was no question about it. Mm -hmm. You know, he knew it of a certainty. There was, this was not a dream. Yeah. This was not a dream. Yeah. See, this was not his imagination. Amen. See, this was not, he was not just, he was not, he, see, this was something, this was God, when God appeared to us, see, mm -hmm. Abraham, Abraham knew it was. Mm -hmm. And that uh, God told him to get himself out of his country and from his kindred and from his father's house unto a land that I would show thee. It's the first words to Abraham mm -hmm. that God spoke. That's uh, that's that's kind of that's kind of a brief introduction there, right? Mm -hmm. Just just get the out. You just get. That's the first word he said. On record, right? Mm -hmm. You just get out of your country. Yeah. Uh -huh. You just get out of your country. Didn't even introduce who he was. Just get out of your country. Mm -hmm. Just get out. Of, no, but Abraham knew who it was. That's Abraham right. knew who it yeah. was. See. And uh, and from your kindred and from your father's house to a land uh, that uh, God would show thee, and uh, and Abraham obeyed, and he went out knowing not whither he went. He did precisely what God had said renouncing ingrained traditions received from his fathers, renouncing all that he was leaving behind mm -hmm. and setting his affection upon that which God had promised. Amen. Now that's the effectuality of God's promise. Uh -huh. 
That's the effectuality of God speaking to men. See, this is this is what uh, this is what was, you see what I'm saying here. This uh -huh, was yeah. not. See, this was not. Um, see, we're, we, it, we're, this is all traceable back to God. See, mm -hmm. but it is we do we do certainly commend Abraham. To consider we consider this this man and we and we, we think so we we think of we think a lot of this man Abraham right? because the scripture the scripture makes a lot of him right. Right. Amen. <laughs> It seems that there was some knowledge of God re regarding the Most High in the country from which Abraham uh, came. You know, think about this. You know, remember when this, you know, when he went back to get a bride for, uh, remember he went to see, mm -hmm. to Laban's house, right? Mm -hmm. There was some knowledge of God there at Laban's house. There was some knowledge of God. It wasn't, it wasn't like total ignorance of God. Uh -huh. And that, and that could be the reason why God could just start, he could just speak to him, you know, mm -hmm. without saying, well, I'm the God of, you know, I'm, the, I'm such and such a God. You know, he just, mm -hmm. just started speaking. But I'm saying, he's just, and Abraham knew who it was. Mm -hmm. I, well, this is my conjecture. See, it's a conjecture, right? But I'm, I'm just, I'm asking, I'm actually asking you to think about this, mm -hmm. you know, that why, you know, here in, in Genesis, well, you know what, in Genesis, uh, in Genesis 15, he introduces mm -hmm. himself, right? Yeah. God, he says, I am thy... He says, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward, right? He, God introduces himself, right? I'm God Almighty. I am God Almighty, right? Walk before me and be thou perfect, right? See, in the other instances, there's an introduction, right? But in this first one, there's no introduction. He just, he just starts talking to Abraham. But Abraham, Abraham knew who he was. Abraham knew who he was, right? He did not respond as, as Paul did on the, on the Damascus road, Who art thou, Lord? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nor as Zacharias, before, whom the, uh, before the angel Gabriel, Whereby shall I know this? He didn't ask any questions. Mm -hmm. He just, he says, he just, he just believed. He just believed God. You know, he just, Abraham, God talked to Abraham, and Abraham believed God. Yes, that's, that's even the, initially, right at the first, right? Yes. Okay, and then, there were, however, at least two occasions recorded in the Genesis account when, when Abraham's faith appeared to waver a bit. And once was with regard to Eliezer. Remember, this is towards the beginning, after the promise was given, you know, shortly after the promise was given, you know, this, this matter of Eliezer. So now this was, this was like the easy way out. You know, the flesh, flesh has a tendency to... Uh, to want to take the easy way out, right? He said, "What? Well, now here, see this Eliezer in my house, this mm -hmm. steward of my house." Now he was, see, now God, Abraham was like suggesting, well, maybe he could be the, maybe he could be the, he, the, he, he could be the heir, see, because uh, Sarah and I, quite frankly, aren't able to bring forth children, right? So, so maybe, maybe this, maybe Eliezer could be the, maybe he could be the one, right? Mm -hmm. he says, but God says, no, this, this shall not, this shall, this one shall not be the heir. Amen. He shall not, this one shall not be the heir, but one who is born of thine own power. So That's this right. is, so God very emphatically, he said, no, this is not, even at Abraham's suggestion. Mm -hmm. And then, then the other occasion had to do with Ishmael. Remember, uh, mm -hmm. and this was later on. This was actually towards the end. Mm -hmm. You know, this was in that 25 year period. You know, from the duration, from the giving of the promise until the promise was actually fulfilled. You know, this is towards the end of that duration. Now, now God, remember he said, this is when he had 80. You know, this is after Sarah had, uh, you know, he suggested Hagar and Hagar, you know, be, you know, be, be uh, his concubine and he'd bring forth mm -hmm. uh, children by uh, Hagar, bring forth a son by Hagar. You know, this was uh, because she wasn't able to bear children and, and Hagar and, and Hagar had Ishmael and Ishmael had grown up. And, and so now he said, oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. See, but see this was no, not, it's not going to be Ishmael. Right. So it's not going to be Ishmael either. See, it's going to be, he says here, uh, Let me read, just get the text here. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai, thy mm -hmm. wife, this is where she, she, he changed Sarai's name to uh -huh. Sarah, thou shalt call her name Sarah, not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name, and I will bless her. And I will give thee a son also of her, and I will bless thee. I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations, mm -hmm. and kings of people shall be of her. Mm -hmm. 
And it was then that Abraham fell on his faith and laughed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Mm -hmm. Abraham actually laughed. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And uh, I, we all know the story here. We're Bible people, so I don't think mm -hmm. I need to deal with that anymore. But mm -hmm. my point, the point that I'm making here is that, you know, that when the when the uh, when the Lord uh, wrote wrote up these people uh, later on, mm -hmm. like in Hebrews and Peter, mm -hmm. and there's not there's not not one breath. There is not one breath mentioned of, of these deviations, mm -hmm. of these of these waverings. Mm -hmm. There is not there is not to talk about Sarah who called her called Abraham Lord. Mm -hmm. You, you, you'll check back there in the context which, in which he called him Lord. He had, to, he had to find a place that was a, you know, to find a place where, he, where she actually called him that, but I believe it was mm -hmm. a, a place where she, he was, she was uh, remonstrating or she was saying something that, but, but anyhow, she called, she called Abraham Lord, yeah. and, and that's what the Holy Spirit wrote up. That's right. She, she called him Lord. Mm -hmm. Call him Lord. That's, yeah. that's. And that's what the record says. Amen. I'll tell you, whatever the Holy Spirit, however he writes you up, that's going to be how you're written up. See? Amen. See, everything else is going to get burned up, right? So all the, all the other things are going to get burned up. See, are you, see so, and, and that's, that's good news. You know, you got to, see, now these aberrations, we, we never hear about Ishmael in regard to Abraham's failure. Uh-huh. Now, he's mentioned in Galatians, right? He's mentioned Ishmael, you know, from Hagar, but, but, uh, but we, we, never, we never read about him in the apostles' writings as a mention, as a matter of failure on the part of, the, of Abraham mm -hmm. or Sarah. No, because, because of this matter of justification by faith. Mm -hmm. See, this is the matter, this is the nature of justification by faith. This is, mm -hmm. I mean, he's, he's justified us from all things from which we could not be justified mm -hmm. by the law of Moses. See, Amen. This, is a, this is a glorious justification, see? Amen. Let's think about uh, the timing of the, uh, the giving of, of the circumcision in the purpose of God. Now, now, by design, God began making promise to Abraham in Genesis 12 and 15 prior to the giving of the covenant of circumcision. Mm -hmm. This is a critical point. Yeah. And later on, this is going to be a critical point in the apostles' reasoning, see? Mm -hmm. Critical point. So it doesn't. It doesn't appear back there in the Genesis account. You, you're reading back there in Genesis and say, mm -hmm. "Well, that's that's uh, that sounds good," but mm -hmm. it's like you don't see that connection back there until until Paul makes it. Yeah. It makes Paul makes the connection later mm -hmm. on. But anyhow, uh, the uh, the covenant of circumcision was given in, in Genesis 17. Now here, see here. This is uh, this is important as Bible people. Why it's it's good for us. Uh, now we don't we do not have to be a a, a theological seminary professor, that's not what we're saying, that's, but I'm just saying that we, we don't want to be stupid when it comes to the Word of God. I think the people of God sh should not be stupid concerning right. these things. Amen. These, these are things that the people of God ought, these are, these are things that pe uh -huh. the people of God ought to know. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about things that have a bearing on faith. Mm -hmm. People, that, things that have a bearing on, on your salvation. Yes. So we're talking about those kind of things. We're not just talking about just any old facts, you know, or, you know, we, we, you know, Brother Fred used to talk about digging around in the Old Testament. You know, you can get lost in the Old Testament, right? But that, I mean, without without any avail. See, but the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Amen. See, that's what. See, see, it all. It's all traceable to Him. That's see, right. that's where. That's where it's all. Uh, it all goes. It's all pointing to Him. Mm -hmm. See, now, if, if we lose that connection, yeah. Well, then, then we're then we're uh, disconnected. Mm -hmm. Since God does nothing without cause and nothing that is not in full accordance with his eternal purpose in Christ, the details of his work are replete with implications that have a, vi a vital impl implication mm -hmm. and bearing upon other things. Everybody get that? Mm -hmm. Let me read that sentence again. Mm -hmm. Since God does nothing without cause, this mm -hmm. is in, uh, in Ezekiel chapter 37. Mm -hmm. And nothing that is not in full accord with his eternal purpose mm -hmm. in Christ, the details of his work are replete. Mm -hmm. They're full mm -hmm. with implications mm -hmm. that have bearing 
vital bearing upon other things. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now in this case, God made promise to Abraham before uh -huh. he gave him the covenant of circumcision, mm -hmm. which is more evident, right? Mm -hmm. But righteousness was also imputed to Abraham because he believed on the Lord and the, and the, before the giving of the covenant of circumcision. Yeah, that's right. Remember that? Genesis 15. Mm -hmm. Abraham believed on the Lord. It was imputed unto him for righteousness. Yeah, see, that's a, so actually, see, the, the righteousness was imputed before mm -hmm. the giving of the covenant of circumcision. Amen. See, it actually uh -huh. it, antedates, yeah. it antedates the covenant of circumcision. That's see? right. That's a, that's a uh, you know, that's a good thing to know. Yeah. See, that's a building block. See, mm -hmm. that you're actually a building block for understanding, mm -hmm. just to mm -hmm. just to be able to reason that way. You know, just well, mm -hmm. this came, this was here before before yeah. circumcision was. You know, so uh, we, you know, whatever's first is first, right? That's right. And then uh, think about this: that uh, righteousness was imputed to Abraham the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. He's called that in, 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 in Genesis 14:13. Abraham the Hebrew before there were formal procedures and rites for being and becoming a Hebrew. Yeah, that's right. See, it was like, you know, this was the, the, the which was circumcision, right? Mm -hmm. the circumcision was the, the this was the, uh, this was the means for becoming a Hebrew, mm -hmm. even if you were one that was born a stranger. Yeah. You know, you, if you wanted to become a proselyte, you had to be circumcised, right? You had to be, Every man child uh, that eight days year, eight days old had to be circumcised, right? So Abraham, but Abraham the Hebrew, he re he's the, he received the promise before before the uh, the matter of uh, before it, it became a, a a formal matter of becoming a Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Abraham the Hebrew became the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that father Abraham, of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which includes us Gentiles, Amen. actually. So, actually, there were Gentiles before they were Jews. You know, that's actually the, you know, but we, that's, uh, you know, if you want to be technical about mm -hmm. it, you know, that's, uh, I guess you might say that, but actually, maybe maybe we shouldn't say that because, uh, you know, that the, the well, it does talk about, in Genesis 10, it talks about Gentiles of the nations, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah. Gentiles of the nations. But the distinction really came when there were, when the, when there were came the Jews, right? right. The Jews and the Gentiles, uh -huh. right? So then, the Jews, the Gentiles, and the Church of God, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Amen. That's in 1 Corinthians 10, 32. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, now let's think about the great and eternal circumstance. Now, if you think about... Uh, the sufferings of Job and the sufferings of Christ. So think about those two kinds of sufferings side by side. In the sufferings of Job, we're brought to consider from many perspectives the grievous things that came upon Job. And Job resonates with our spirits because we too often have troubles and perplexities in this life in which we can only derive comfort by being able to see the connection with our Redeemer, see this, and that he did it, see. Now Job, Job assists us in, in these circumstances of life, see, we, we have these, we have the, you can, you can point back to dates and times in your life that, that are associated with these circumstances, you have circumstances, mm -hmm. right, to, that you can remember, see, and, and you're, you were comforted in them because you, you saw the connection that God, there was a, there was a divine connection. You saw afterwards that there was actually a divine connection with mm -hmm. your suffering and your sorrow. You saw that God was actually, God was actually in that, mm -hmm. and that Jesus was actually in that. See, this was see this is what this is the this was the divine and this was the comfort. See, that's where comfort comes when you can see when you can see if you can see in your trouble and your sorrow if you can see it if you can see the connection with what God is doing mm -hmm. and with together with your sorrow, well, you'll be comforted. See. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to have the, the sorrow go away. You can still, you can bear up under it. See, you can say, well, I, can, I see the connection, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm, I'm going to rejoice in my sufferings, you know. Mm -hmm. and so, uh, now in the sufferings of Christ, we are, we're brought face to face with the great and eternal circumstance mm -hmm. of sins that are washed away, 
of salvation and calling that are not according to our works, but according to God's own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. For those living by faith in the Son of God, this latter circumstance overshadows and eclipses all lesser circumstances. Mm -hmm. I'll say, if you, can, if you can see this circumstance, if you can see what God has done in Christ, mm -hmm. it's going to overshadow all the troubles, see? All the little circumstances of this life, see, it's going to be greatly overshadowed. See, we're just, we actually only have one circumstance to deal with, actually, mm -hmm. technically, yeah. right? Amen. It has to do with God and Christ. Yeah. And it has to do with salvation. It has to do with remission of sins. It has to do with eternal life. See, that's the, that's the circumstance that I'm talking about. It's, it's like one circumstance. You know, we've been brought to, we've been actually been inducted into one mm -hmm. great and eternal circumstance, see, mm -hmm. in, this, in, the, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now compare the faith of Abraham, exemplified, and the faith which Jesus authors and finishes. Now, you see the point that I'm making now, Abraham exemplified the faith that we, uh, we want to be part of, right? But, but actually it comes from Jesus. See, mm -hmm. it actually, it, it proceeds, Abraham, we don't get our faith from Abraham, mm -hmm. we get our faith from Jesus, right? Amen. He's the author and finisher of our faith. Yes. The sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be uh, compared with the glory. Uh, the sufferings of this present time are readying us to take possession of a dominion and reign in the world to come. Mm -hmm. Now think about this, brethren. We, and we were talking about this the other night at the at the restaurant. But you know, sorrows and griefs and vexations and afflictions and tribulations are not merely things to be endured in the present time. And that's the end of the matter. But they're all part of the training for the dominion and glory that's up ahead through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is training. Mm -hmm. See, when, see, like when, you're, when your spirit is vexed, I'll tell you, you're vexed by the filthy conversation of the wicked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, or you're, or you're grieved, or you're misunderstood. Or you, you know, just any, any the, the suffering takes on so many different, mm -hmm. you know, so many different uh, aspects, you know, but, but see, this is part of the training, see. It's Amen. Part of, this, it, you're, you're being ready to step That's into right. a dominion and reign, see. It's going to be, it's going to be, you're going to be, you're going to be ready, to, you're just going to be ready to do this, see. That's right. Now think about this, that, that see, the, in all these troubles, see, they're, these are sustained. The things that you're experiencing are sustained. Mm -hmm. In other words, what I mean by that is that it's, you, you know, like tribulation, work with patience, patience, experience, experience, hope, mm -hmm. and hope maketh not ashamed, right? And see now we're building on them. See here we're building on those blocks, right? We're building on this. See now here we see like, like you, you you say well I've been through. We don't say well I've been through this before. We say well I've uh, I've been through this before and I'm 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 ready to go through it again. I'm ready to I'm ready to, to take the kingdom by violence now because I I know whom I have believed and I'm I'm persuaded that he's able to mm -hmm. to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Amen. Being vexed by the filthy conversation of the wicked, being grieved by the neglect of the great salvation that is being held in fellow men and, and near kinsmen, suffering rejection at the hand of other men because of one's devotion to the Savior, being called upon in life's experience to make righteous assessments of works, uh, both that are done and that are beheld in other men, Joying in God through the Lord Jesus Christ, even in the face of troublesome times, these things are all preparatory for entrance into glory. Mm -hmm. If we suffer with him, we shall reign with him. If we deny him by refusing to suffer, he will also deny us. Mm -hmm. If we believe not, he, yet he abideth faithful to his own person and word. We, mm -hmm. He cannot deny himself. Now, men school other men by imparting earthly wisdom, but God's school is a school of trial uh -huh. and suffering affliction. The graduates of men's schools who only gain earth wisdom 
shall be washed away with the passing of time. But those who triumphantly pass through the school of tribulation and patience and experience and hope are being eternalized and fitted for the new heavens and the new earth Amen. wherein dwelleth righteousness. Amen. Mm. Well, I've, I've kind of, uh, I guess I've kind of said most of what I was going to say, you know, and, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes you get up before the people of God and you you feel very, uh, feel very confident and sometimes you feel like you're, you know, you're, you're, you're very weak and, uh, and I, uh, but anyhow, regardless, I won't even go any farther with that thought. I just want to, let's, let's talk about this matter of, uh, of circumcision. Let's talk about the, the, the thought, this thought that was sown in the earth of circumcision. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, remember the, uh, in Genesis 17, remember it was said that the, that the uncircumcised man shall be cut off from among his people, yeah, right? right. Very, very, and, then, and then later on in, uh, in Exodus 4, remember the same thought? that God almost killed Moses because he, he neglected to uh, uh -huh. circumcise his son. Uh -huh. And then uh, a little bit later on, uh, this matter of the, uh, let's see here, in Deuteronomy 30 and verse 6, and the Lord thy God will circumcise thy heart. See, mm -hmm. here's a, this is like a, this is a, uh, and, and the heart of thy seed. See here, this is like us taking this, thought a step further. Now we're not, we're, we're not talking about the flesh uh, so much as we're talking about the heart, although we're still, they were still circumcising the flesh at that time. And thus uh, saith the Lord, no stranger uncircumcised and uncircumcised in flesh shall enter into my sanctuary or, or any sanctuary that is among the children of Israel. I'm just going to, let me just say, uh, remember in Romans chapter 2, he talks about this, uh, right at the end of the chapter there, and he talks about, he's not a Jew who is one outwardly, but one, mm -hmm. but ne and neither that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly, mm -hmm. circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. And then in, uh, in Gal uh, Galatians, Paul says in two different places that circumcision is nothing. Mm -hmm. And neither circumci uncircumcision is nothing, right? So, so anyhow, now my point is that now God, see, in this, in this time period, mm -hmm. and then, and of course, and then Colossians, this Brother Tim's text here, this, we were, we've been circumcis circumcised with the circumcision mm -hmm. made without hands. This was the direction towards mm -hmm. which circumcision is pointing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just think about this. Circumcision is nothing. You think Abraham could have said that? Said Genesis 17, well, <laughs> circumcision is nothing. Could we have said that back no, then? No, no. could not have said it back then, right? See, God was still sowing the thought yeah, in that's earth, right? right? Yeah. So, but how about, could we say, how about if we take Genesis 17 and put it up here in Galatians? Could we say it then? Could no. we say that? Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't fit, right? That's because, that's because, of, this is because God is, this is because of what God has worked. See, yeah, he's, worked right. he's, he's wrought this work of understanding in men. See, mm -hmm. we exact, see the point of the point to which of what circumcision was was made to teach. See, now it, it's to serve his purpose. Yeah, see, and now right. it's, it's still here. Uh -huh. But it's we but now we have the we have the understanding in mm -hmm. the in, in the in the sense that it was at, it was originally pointed to. See? Yeah, 